I was with a bunch of other investors who I respect, and they brought me a deal, and I wanted to be part of it, but it didn't feel right. And I wrote millions of dollars on that one. And it just didn't feel right, and I lost it all within two years. So should investors trust their gut then? Absolutely, and trust your gut. But what about you said earlier? Don't be emotional, and sometimes the gut is no. This this, this is a barometer of risk. It's something an internalized for an investor that says, "I don't feel comfortable." It's not about emotion. It's just don't write that check. That was recently the first time I didn't listen to that, and I lost everything. So now my my radar is up. I listen to my gut. It's not an emotion. It's an, an index of risk. And you get it as you age. You become a better investor every year. If only I could live to 200, I'd be really good. Often your family will come to you, your cousin, your uncle, your sister, saying, please invest in my business. You've got to differentiate between family, friends, and money. You've got to be careful that you don't get yourself in a situation where you lose your money because you got emotionally involved. That's a very big piece of advice because I've done it the wrong. I've, everybody's made mistakes as an investor. That's one of the ones I made in the early times I never make again. I remembered a story, and it really affected me years ago. My mother, I was born in Montreal, worked at a company called Kitty's Togs. And she used to come home and tell my brother and I, because they'd pay them every week on Thursday morning, she'd always invest a third of her paycheck into bell bonds right. with coupons. She'd always say to me, boys, never spend the principal, just the interest. And never, ever, ever, ever buy a security that doesn't pay a dividend. Right. And, you know, back in those days, stocks paid higher dividends than the bonds. For so example, you know, Bell Canada had a 6% yield on its five-year paper, its right. bonds. The stock yielded 7 to entice people to take the risk to own an equity. Mm -hmm. And we got lost somewhere between the 50s and the 60s and 70s. And we actually thought that it was a good investment to buy a stock that didn't pay a dividend, which to me is insane. So anyways, I, I wanted to f found a firm on that, my mother's basic concept because, you know, she died a few years ago and I, I was executive for her estate and I looked at the, her portfolio, which she never shared with anybody, but 40 years compounded dividends yeah. and bonds, you know, 73% of the market's returns over the last 40 years came from dividends, not capital appreciation. And she knew that intuitively. So that's how we built the foundation of O'Leary Funds. We listened to mom. We don't own a single security that doesn't pay a dividend. I will never buy a stock in my life that doesn't pay a dividend. Yeah. If it's not returning cash to me, it's a speculation. And if a manager can't send me cash, I'm not interested. There's some rules about investing that I've learned over 35 years of doing it. And, and they're very simple, but even in the darkest times, you should think about these things. If you're investing for the long run and you're saving money for your retirement, you should never panic in times of volatility. We've had extreme volatility because today we're in a global economy. People are worried about China. They're worried about India. They're worried about Brazil. Canada's only 2.5% of the world's GDP, so we tend to be very volatile too. But during these periods, it's just the market being the market. And if you don't sell at the bottom, which is what is the worst thing you can do, you just sit tight. If you have a good strategy, just sit tight. You should make the assumption when you make an investment, there's some probability you'll lose it. It'll go to zero. And that's why you need to have, you know, a, 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 a reserve, like a, a backup plan, some cash set aside that if everything blows up, you're okay. I find it extraordinary when people make their first, you know, liquidity event and they have some capital that they blow it all again. That is the biggest mistake. You've got to take a nut even if it stays in cash, or it's a very, very liquid, safe security to say, that I don't touch. It goes back to what my mother taught me. Spend the interest, never the principal. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you know, I make a lot of crazy investments. I don't touch the principal. Diversification. What I've learned that works if you're an investor, no matter how much money you've got, whether it's $5,000 or $500 million, diversification is what saves you from disaster. Having investments in a wide range of businesses and sectors there's always something working when something else isn't. So today I can go to bed tonight knowing that I have one objective. I want to go to bed richer than I woke up. And the only way that's going to happen to me is to be invested in a lot of different things. Because every day one thing works while three others don't. But sometimes that's why you get richer.
What I find people do is they fall in love with one idea or one stock or one investment or their sister comes to them and says, I want to open a restaurant. Ah, uh, yes. You should never do that. What you should say is, whatever money I've got, I'll never put more than 5% into one idea. I'll never let myself get caught up in an idea that ends up being so big to me that if it fails, I get wiped out. This is the key to success. No more than 5% in any one idea and no more than 20% in any one sector. For example, if you love energy stocks, only 20% max. If you love gold, only 20% max. You have to have diversification. This is the one thing that will save your hiney.